we present another play in the Flora Robson Festival series, Dangerous Corner by J.B. Priestley. Flora Robson plays the part she created when the play was first produced in 1932. Flora Robson as Alwyn Peel in Dangerous Corner. Especially written for broadcasting by Mr. Humphrey Stoat. The actors taking part were... And um, that's that. I hope it didn't bore you, Miss Mockridge. Not in the least. I don't like the plays and the stuffy talks. I like the dance music, and so does Gordon. <laughs> dance fiends. You know, Miss Mockridge, every time my brother Gordon comes here, he annoys us by fiddling about trying to get dance music. I adore switching off the solemn, pompous lecturers. Just exactly. Distinguishing them. <laughs> what did they call that play? The Sleeping Dog. Why the Sleeping Dog? Because you had to let him lie. <laughs> let who lie? Well, they were all telling lies, weren't they? Or they had been. How many scenes did we miss? Five, I think. I suppose they must have been telling a lot of lies in those scenes. That's why that man was so angry. The husband, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the men. They're probably laughing at something very improper. No, just gossip. Men gossip like anything. Of course they do. Quite right. I insist upon my publishers gossiping. Yes, but the men pretend it's business. Well, they get a marvellous excuse now that they're all three directors of the firm. <laughs> yes, of course. Miss Peel, I think you ought to marry Mr Stanton. Oh, why should I? To complete the pattern here. Then there'd be three pairs of adoring husbands and wives. I was thinking... Presentation interruption. End of spur three. Out and over to the fourth spur now. E. B. Priestley, featuring Flora Robson, in the part she created in 1932. Already on the penultimate spur preceding, we have recorded about two minutes of the play. We pick up and press on here with Dangerous Corner by J.B. Priestley, featuring Flora Robson. There be three pairs of adoring husbands and wives. I was thinking so all through dinner. There you are, Alwyn. <laughs> I'm always prepared to marry Charles Stanton myself to one of your charmed circle. What a snug little group you are. <laughs> are we? Well, aren't you? The snug little group. <laughs> How awful. Not awful at all. I think it's charming. It sounds disgusting. Yes, like Dickens or a Christmas card. And very nice things to be, and these days almost too good to be true. Uh, why should it be? I didn't know you were such a pessimist, Miss Mockridge. Didn't you? Certainly I'm a pessimist. But I didn't mean it in that way. Of course, I think it's wonderful. It is rather nice here. We've been lucky. Enchanting. I hate to leave it. You know, I'm in the town office now, not down here at the press. But I come back as often as I can. I'm sure you do. It must be so comforting to be all so settled. Mm, pretty good. But I suppose you all miss your brother-in-law. You mean Robert's brother, Martin? Yes, Martin Kaplan. I was in America at the time and never quite understood what happened. Something rather dreadful, wasn't it? Oh, have I dropped a brick? I'm always dropping bricks. <laughs> no, not at all. Martin shot himself. It happened nearly a year ago. Last June, in fact. And not here, but at Fallow's End, about 20 miles away. He'd taken a cottage there. Oh, yes. Dreadful business, of course. He was very handsome, wasn't he? Yes, very handsome. Who's very handsome? <laughs> not you, Charles. Well, may we know? Or is it some grand secret between you? They were talking about me. Betty, why do you allow them to talk about your husband in this fulsome fashion? <laughs> you know shame, girl. <laughs> now, how's the new novel going? Splendidly. Gordon, <laughs> darling, I'm sure you've had too much manly gossip and old brandy. A typical financier. Without the... Sorry uh, to be so late, Frida. But it's that wretched puppy of yours. 
Hmm? What's he been doing now? It was eating the script of Sonia Williams' new novel, and I thought it might make him sick. <laughs> oh, darling. I've just been saying what a charming, cosy little group you've made here, all of you. I'm glad you think so. I think you've all been lucky. I agree, we have. Ah, oh, but it's not all luck, Miss Mockridge. You see, we all happen to be nice, easygoing people. Except Betty. She's terribly wild. Oh, well, that's only because Gordon doesn't beat her often enough. Oh. Uh, yet. <laughs> see, Miss Peel, Mr. Stanton is still the cynical bachelor. I'm afraid he rather spoils the picture. Oh, well, Miss Peel can't afford to talk. She's transferred herself to the London office and deserted us. Well, I come back here as often as I'm asked. But whether it's to see me or Robert, we can't yet decide. <laughs> anyway, Betty's getting jealous. Oh, brightly. <laughs> What's disturbing the ether tonight? Anybody know? Oh, I'll find something for you. Here's the radio time. Gordon, oh, don't start it again. We've only just turned it off. Oh, what did you hear? The last half of a play. It was called The Sleeping Dog. Why? We're not sure. Something to do with lies with a gentleman shooting himself. What fun they have at the BBC. Yes, don't they? Shots and things. <laughs> you know, I believe I understand that play now. The sleeping dog was the truth, do you see, and that man, the husband, insisted upon disturbing it. He was quite right to disturb it. Was he, I wonder? You know, I think it's a very sound idea, the truth as a sleeping dog. Of course, we do spend too much of our time telling lies and acting them. Oh. Very likely. I'm all for it coming out. It's healthy. And I think telling the truth is about as healthy as skidding round a corner at 60. And life's got a lot of dangerous corners, hasn't it, Charles? It can have, if you don't choose your route well. To lie or not to lie? What do you think, Alwyn? You're looking terribly wise. I agree with you. I think telling everything is dangerous. The point is, I think, there's truth and truth. I always agree to that. Something and something. Oh, shut up, Gordon. <laughs> Go on. Oh. Yes, go on. Well, the real truth, that is, every single little thing with nothing missing at all, wouldn't be dangerous. I suppose that's God's truth. But what most people mean by truth, what that man meant in the wireless play, is only half the real truth. It doesn't tell you all that went on inside everybody. It's rather treacherous stuff. I'm not convinced, Miss Peel. I'm ready to welcome what you call half the truth. The fact. So am I. I'm all for it. Well, you would be, Robert. What do you mean by that, Frida? <laughs> Anything, nothing. Oh, let's talk about something more amusing. Who wants a drink? Uh, drinks, Robert. Yes. And cigarettes. Uh, Miss Mockridge? No, thank you. Oh, then. A cigarette? Oh, I remember that box. It plays a tune at you, doesn't it? I remember the tune. Um, La Traviata. Good, isn't it? Well, it? It can't have been this box you remember, Alwyn. This is the first time I've had it out. It, it belonged to someone else. It belonged to Martin, didn't it? He showed it to me. Oh, he couldn't have shown it to you, Alwyn. He hadn't got it when you last saw him. Martin couldn't have shown you this box, Alwyn. Couldn't he? No. No, perhaps he couldn't. I, oh, I suppose I got mixed up. Alwyn, I'm going to be rather rude, but I know you won't mind. You know, you suddenly stopped telling the truth then, didn't you? You're absolutely positive that this is the box Martin showed you, just as Frida is equally positive it isn't. Well, does that matter? Not a hoot, I'd say. I tried to find some dance music, but this thing has suddenly decided not to function. Right, Gordon, then don't fiddle about with it. Don't bully Gordon. Well, you stop him. No, I don't suppose it does matter, Alwyn. But after what we'd been saying, I couldn't help thinking that it was uh, rather an odd, provoking situation. Well, just what I was thinking. It's all terribly provoking. More about the cigarette box, please. <laughs> it's all perfectly simple. Wait a minute, please, Frida. I don't think it is all perfectly simple, but I can't see that it matters now. I don't understand you. Neither do I. First you say that it can't have been the same box, and now you say it's not all perfectly simple and begin to hint at grand mysteries. I believe you're hiding something, Alwyn. That isn't like you. Either that box you saw was Martin's, or it wasn't. Oh, damn the box. Oh, but oh, Mr. Stanton, Look, sorry, but I hate a box that plays <coughs> tunes that you like that anyway. Let's forget it. Yes, and Martin, too. He's not here, and we are. All warm and cosy. Such a charming group. Shut up, Gordon. Well, don't let's mention Martin or think about him. 
It's bad form. He's dead. Well, there's no need to be hysterical about it, Gordon. One would think you owned Martin to hear you talk. Instead of which, nobody owned Martin. He belonged to himself. He'd some sense. Oh, what does all that mean, Betty? Oh, it means that I'm being rather stupid, and I think I'm going to have a headache any minute. Is that all? Isn't that quite enough, Robert? Well, go on, Frida, about the box. The cigarette box came to us with some other of Martin's things from the cottage. I put it away. This is the first time it's been out here. Now, the last time Alwyn was at the cottage was that Saturday when we all went over. Gordon, you remember? Gosh, yes. What a day it was. Yes, it was a good day. Though I had no idea you had been so excited about it, Gordon. Not than anybody else. Gordon seems to have decided that he ought to be hysterical every time Martin is mentioned. The point is, then, that that first Saturday in June was the last time Alwyn was at Martin's cottage. Yes. I know that he hadn't got that cigarette box then. So there you are, Alwyn. There I am. Yes, but... Hang it all. Where are you? Oh, you are a baby, Robert. I don't know where I am. Out of the dock or the witness box, I hope. Oh, no, please. That would be too disappointing. You know, that wasn't the last time you were at the cottage, Alwyn. Don't you remember you and I ran over the next Sunday afternoon to see Martin about those little etchings? Yes. Yes, that's true. But I don't remember him showing us this cigarette box. In fact, I've never seen it before. I've never seen it before, and I don't think I ever want to see it again. I've never heard such a lot of fuss about nothing. Oh, I wouldn't be too sure about this, Charles, but uh, I may as well tell you that Martin couldn't have shown you the box that Sunday anyhow, because he hadn't got it then. You seem to know a lot about that box, Frida. It's just what I was going to say. Why are you so grand and knowing about it? I know why, Frida. You gave it to him. Did you, Frida? Yes, I gave it to him. Oh, that's queer. When did you give it him? Where did you pick it up? That's all quite simple. I happened to see the cigarette box at Calthrop's. And Calthrop sent it to Martin down at Fallow's End so that he never got it until that last Saturday? Yes. Well, that's that. I'm sorry, Frida, but it's not quite so simple as that. You mustn't forget that I was with Martin at the cottage that very Saturday morning. Well, what about it? Well, I was there when the parcel post came with the letters in the morning. I remember Martin had a parcel of books from Jack Brookfield. But he didn't have that cigarette box. I suppose he must have arrived by the afternoon post then. What does it matter? It doesn't matter at all, Frida, darling. Except that at Fallows End, parcels are never delivered in the afternoon post. Oh, yes, they are. No. Well, how do you know? Because Martin used to grumble about it and say that he always got books and manuscripts a day late. That cigarette box didn't arrive in the morning because I saw the post opened. It couldn't have been delivered in the afternoon. Frida, I don't believe those shop people in town ever sent the box. You took it to Martin yourself. You did, didn't you? You're a fool, Gordon. Possibly. Did you, Frida? If you must know, I did it. Frida? I thought so. But, Frida, if you went to the cottage to give Martin the box after Gordon had left, you must have seen Martin later than anybody. Only a few hours before he... Before he shot himself? I did. I saw him between tea and dinner. But why have you never said anything about it? What good would it have done? It, it was bad enough Gordon having to do it. It was hell. Uh, if it could have helped Martin, I'd have gone. But, well, it couldn't have helped anybody. That's true. You were quite right. Yes, I can understand that. But why didn't you tell me? You were the very last person to talk to Martin. Was I the last person? You must have been. And what about Alwyn? Alwyn? Oh, the cigarette box. Yes, of course, the cigarette box. Martin didn't get that box until after tea on that Saturday afternoon, and Alwyn's admitted that he showed it to her. No, she didn't. She said it was some other box, and I vote we believe her and have done with it. No, no, Mrs. White. Yes, I do. It's all wrong going on and on like this. And I second that. And I don't. Oh, but what? Oh, sorry, Betty. Though, after all, you don't come into this and it can't hurt you. But Martin was my brother, and I don't like all these mysteries, and I've a right to know. All right, Robert. But must you know now? I don't see the necessity, but then I didn't see the necessity why I should have been cross-examined with the entire approval of the company, apparently. But now that it's... now that it's your turn, Alwyn, I've no doubt that Robert will relent. I don't see why you should say that, Frida. I'm sure you don't, Robert. And you might as well admit it, Alwyn. Martin showed you that box, and I didn't, he? 
So you must have seen him. You must have been to the cottage that Saturday night. Yes, he did show me the box. That was after dinner, about nine o'clock on that Saturday night. You were there too? But this is crazy. First Frida, then you, and neither of you has said a word about him. I'm sorry, Robert, I just couldn't. But what were you doing there? I'd been worried about something... something that I'd heard. It had been worrying me for days, and at last I couldn't stand it any longer. I felt I had to see Martin to ask him about it. Oh, man. So I ran over to Fallow's End. Nobody saw me go, nobody saw me leave. You know how quiet it was there. Like Frida, I thought it wouldn't serve any good purpose to come forward at the inquest, so I didn't. That's all. But you can't dismiss it like that. You must have been the very last person to talk to Martin. You must know something about it. Oh, it's all over and done with. Let's leave it alone, please, but... Robert. Besides, I'm sure we must be boring Miss Mockridge with all this stuff. Oh, no, I'm enjoying it. Very much. We don't mean to discuss it, do we, Fia? There's nothing to discuss. All but, over. But look here, Alwyn, you must tell me this. Had your visit to Martin that night anything to do with the firm? Was that something to do with that missing 500 pounds? Oh, for God's sake, don't drag that money into it. We don't go over that all over again. Martin's gone. Leave him alone, can't you, and shut up about the rotten money. Gordon, be quiet. <laughs> You're behaving like an hysterical child tonight. I'm sorry, Miss Moncrief. No, not at all. But I think, if you don't mind, <coughs> it must be getting late. Oh, no. No, it's early yet. Oh, must you really go, Miss Moncrief? Yes, I really think I ought. It's at least half an hour's run to the Pattersons, and I don't suppose they'd like their car and chauffeur to be kept out too late. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been so delightful seeing you all again. What a charming group you make here. Goodbye, Mrs. Whitehouse. Mm. Goodbye. Goodbye. I think you left your wrap in my room. I'll get it for you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good Goodbye. night, Miss Margaret. I heard that you had a very good time, America. For this relief, much thanks. Oh, good Lord, yes. I'm sorry, but I can't bear that woman. Yeah, it's very rum, but uh, nevertheless, she's not at all a bad novelist. Why is it there seems to be always something rather unpleasant about good novelists? I give it up. I don't call Maud Mockridge a good novelist, Stanton. I bet she's a gossiper. Oh, she is. She's notorious for it. <laughs> it must have been agony for her to go away and not hear any more. She wouldn't have gone if she'd thought she'd have heard any more. But she's got something to be going on with. She'll probably start a new novel in the morning and we'll all be in it. She can't really do much with what she's just heard, you know. After all, why shouldn't Frida have taken Martin a cigarette box and why shouldn't Alwyn have gone to see him? Yes, why not? Uh, oh, I'd forgotten you were there, Alwyn. Can I ask you something? After all, I don't think I've asked anybody anything so far. I... You can ask. I don't promise to answer. I'll risk it then. Were you in love with Martin, Alwyn? Not in the least. I thought you weren't. As a matter of fact, to be absolutely candid, I rather disliked him. Yes, I thought so. Oh, rot. I never believed that, Alwyn. You couldn't dislike Martin. Oh. Nobody could. I don't mean he hadn't any faults or anything. But with him, they just didn't matter. You had to like him. He was Martin. In other words, your God. You know, Gordon literally adored him, didn't you, darling? Well, he could be fascinating, and he was certainly very clever. I must admit, the firm's never been the same without him. I should think not. How could it be? Come along, Frida. Now we can thrash this out. Oh, no, please, Robert. I'm sorry, Alvin, but I want to know the truth now. There's something very queer about all this. First Frida going to see Martin and never saying a word about it, and then you going to see him too, Alvin, and never saying a word about it either. It's, it's not good enough. It seems to me it's about time some of us began telling the truth for a change. Do you always tell the truth, Robert? I try to. Noble fellow. But don't expect too much of us ordinary mortals. Spare our weaknesses. What weaknesses? Anything you like, my dear Frida. Buying musical cigarette boxes, for instance. I'm sure that's a weakness. Nor making rather too much use of one's little country cottage. I think that, too, in certain circumstances, might be described as a weakness. You didn't mean Martin's cottage? I hardly ever went there. I wasn't thinking of Martin's. I must be thinking of another one. Perhaps your own? No, I'm afraid I don't understand. Look oh, here, what's all this about? Are you starting now, Stanton? Oh, certainly not. Well, I want to get to the bottom of this Martin business. And it's up to you, Alwyn. You were the last to see Martin. 
Why did you go to see him like that? Was it about the missing money? Yes, it was. Gordon, I want to go home now. Oh, so soon, Betty. Well, I'm going to have an awful headache if I stay any longer. I'm going home to bed. All right, just a minute. Well, I'll take you along, Betty, if Gordon wants to stay on. No, I want Gordon to come along too. All right, I'll come along, but hang on a minute. I, I tell you, I want to go now. Take me home. Well, what's the matter, Betty? Well, I don't know. I'm stupid, I suppose. All right, we'll go. Well, I'll come along too. Betty, I I'm awfully sorry if all this stuff has upset you. I, I know it's nothing to do with you anyway. Oh, don't go on and on about it. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Well, I'll see these infants home and then turn in myself. Very good of you. Yes, isn't it? Good night. Good night, Charles. And now, Alwyn, you can tell me exactly why you rushed to see Martin like that about the missing money. We're all being truthful now, are we? I want to be. What about you, Frida? Yes, yes, yes. I don't care. What does it matter? Queer way of putting it. Is it? You started all this, you know, Robert. Now it's your turn. Will you be truthful with me? Good God, yes, of course I will. But it's not my turn. I asked you a question that you haven't answered. I know you have. But I'm going to ask you one before I do answer yours. I've been wanting to do it for some time, but I've never had the chance or never dared. Now I don't care. It might as well come out. Robert, did you take that money? Did I take the money? Yes. Of course not. You must be crazy, Alwyn. Oh. <laughs> but do you think even if I had taken it, I'd have let poor Martin shoulder the blame like that? But Martin took it, of course. We all know that. Oh, what a fool I've been. I don't understand. Surely you must have known that Martin took it. You can't have been thinking all this time that I did. Yes, I have. And I've not been thinking. I've been torturing myself with it. But why? Why? Oh. Damn it all, it doesn't make sense. Well, I, I might have taken the money, but never on earth could I have let somebody else, and especially Martin, take the blame for it. I thought you were a friend of mine, Alwyn. One of my best and oldest friends. Might as well know, Robert. Oh, no, Frida, please, please. Oh, why not? What does it matter? You might as well know, Robert. And how you can be just so dense baffles me that Alwyn is not a friend of yours. Oh, of course she She's is. She's not. She's a woman who's in love with you. A very different thing. She's been in love with you for ages. Frida, that's damnably unfair. It's cruel, cruel. Oh, it's not going to hurt you. And he wanted the truth. Let him have it. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, Alwyn. I suppose I've been stupid. We've always been very good friends, and I've always been very fond of you. Stop, stop. Oh, Frida, that was unforgivable. You'd no right to say that. But it's true, isn't it? Alwyn's been in love with you for ages. Wives always are aware of these things, you know. And not only that, I'll tell you now what I've longed to tell you for some time, that... I think you're a fool for not being aware of it yourself. For not having responded to it. For not having done something drastic about it long before this. If somebody loves you like that, for God's sake, enjoy it. Make the most of it. Hold on to it before it's too late. Frida, I understand now. Understand what? About you. I ought to have understood before. If you mean by that that you understand now that Frida doesn't care for me very much, you're right. We've not been very happy together. Somehow our marriage hasn't worked. Nobody knows. Of course they know. Do you mean you've told them? No, of course I haven't told them. They didn't need to be told. But Alwyn here has just said she understood about it for the first time. No, I knew about that before, Robert. It was something else I've just... Well, what is it? I'd rather not explain. Being noble now, Alwyn? You needn't, you know. We're past that. No, it's not that. It's, it's because I couldn't talk about it. There's something horrible to me about it. And I can't tell you why. Oh, I'm when... sorry I said I understood. It slipped out, please. Very well. But you've got to talk about that money now. You said you believed all along that Robert had taken it. It looked to me as if he must have done. But if you believed that, why didn't you say something? Oh, Robert, can't you see why she couldn't? 
You mean she was shielding me? Yes, of course. Alwyn, I'm terribly sorry. I, I had no idea. Oh, it's fantastic, I must say. It's what I said. I've been torturing myself with If you're in love with somebody, you're in love with them. They can be as mean as hell and you'll forget them or just not bother about it. Well, at least some women will. I don't see you doing it, Frida. Don't you? Well, there are a lot of things about me you don't see. This is what I wanted to say, Alwyn. If you thought that Robert had taken that money, then you knew that Martin didn't. Yes, I was sure, after I'd talked to him that last night, that Martin hadn't taken it. But you let us all think he had. I know, I know. But it didn't seem to matter then. It couldn't hurt Martin anymore. He wasn't there to be hurt. And I felt I had to keep quiet. Because of me? Yes, because of you, Robert. But Martin must have taken no. it. That's why he did what he did. He thought he'd be found out. No, it wasn't that at all. You must believe me. I'm positive that Martin never touched that money. I've always thought it queer that he should. Oh, I know he could be wild and rather cruel sometimes, but he couldn't be a cautious, cunning little sneak thief. It wasn't his style at all, and he didn't care enough about money. He spent enough of it. He was badly in debt, you know. Yes, but that's just the point. He didn't mind being in debt. He could have cheerfully gone on being in debt. Money simply didn't matter to him. Now, you loathe being in debt. You're entirely different. Yes, that was one of the reasons I thought that you... Yes, I, I see that. Though I think those fellows who don't care about money, who don't mind being in debt, are just the sort of fellows who help themselves to other people's. Yes, but not in a cautious, sneaky way. That wasn't like Martin at all. I wonder... Alwyn, where did you get the idea that I'd taken it? Why, because Martin himself was sure that you had taken it. He told me so. Martin told you so? Yes. Why should he have thought that? Well, you thought he'd been the thief. You didn't know him any better at all. Yes, but that's different. There were special circumstances. And I'd been told something. You say you'd been told something? But then Martin had been told something, too. He'd practically been told that you'd taken the check. My God. And do you know who told him that you'd taken the check? I can guess now. Who? Stanton, wasn't it, Alvin? Yes, Stanton. But Stanton told me that Martin had taken that check. My God. He Stanton. practically proved it to me. He said he didn't want Martin given away, said we'd all stand in together, all that sort of thing. Don't you see, he told Martin all that, too. And Martin would never have told me if he hadn't known, well, that I would never give you away. Stanton. It was Stanton himself who got that money. It looks like it. Well, I'm sure it was, and he's capable of it. You see, he played Martin and Robert against one another. Mm. Could you have anything more vile? You know, it doesn't follow that Stanton himself was the thief. Of course he was. Wait, let's get this clear. Old Slater wanted some money, and your father signed a bearer check for 500. A check was on your father's desk. Slater didn't turn up the next morning, as he said he would, and when he did turn up three days afterwards, the check wasn't there. Meanwhile, it had been taken to the bank and cashed. Only Stanton, Martin, or I could have got at the check, except dear old Watson, who certainly didn't take it. And this is the point. They said the fellow who cashed the check was about Martin's age or mine. They were rather vague, I gathered, but what they did remember of him certainly ruled out Stanton himself. Mr. Whitehouse wouldn't have you identified at the bank, I remember. No. Father was too fond of them all and too hurt. But what made you believe Martin had taken the check? The evidence pointed to Martin and me, and I knew I hadn't taken it. And Stanton told Stanton you... Stanton told me he'd seen Martin coming out of your father's room. Stanton told Martin he'd seen you coming out of that room. Stanton took the money himself. Whether he took the money or not, Stanton's got to explain this. No wonder he didn't approve of this business and was glad to get out of it. He's got too much to hide. We've all got too much to hide. Then we'll get some daylight into it for once, if it kills us. Stanton's got to explain this. Chantbury one, two. They've probably all gone to bed. Are you going to get them all to come back, Robert? Yes. Uh, hello, is that you, Gordon? Has Stanton gone to bed yet? He hasn't. Well, I want you both to come back here. Yes, more and more of it. It's damned important. Yes, we're all in it. Oh, no, of course not. We can keep Betty out of it. All right, then. Be as quick as you can. They're coming back. 
all of them? No, not Betty. She's going to bed. Wise little Betty. I don't see why you should use that tone of voice, Alvin. As if Betty was cleverly dodging something. You know very well she's not mixed up in this business. Do I? No, but... Hang it all, Alwyn. You've no right to sneer at Betty like that. You know very well it's better to keep her out of all this. No, we mustn't soil her pure young mind. That was Obviously, you dislike her, Alwyn. I can't imagine why. She's always had a great admiration for you. Well, I'm sorry, Robert, but I can't return her admiration, except for her looks. I don't dislike her, but... Well, I can't be as sorry for her as I'd like to be or ought to be. You can't be sorry for her. Is it necessary for you or anybody else to be sorry for? You're talking wildly now, Alwyn. I suspect not, Robert. And anyhow, it seems to be our evening for talking wildly. <laughs> also, I'm now facing a most urgent problem. The sort of problem that only women have to face. If a man has been dragged back to your house to be told he's a liar and a cat and a sneak and possibly a thief, ought you to make a few sandwiches for him? You'll get no sandwiches from me. No sincerity, no sandwiches. That's your motto, isn't it? No? <laughs> oh, dear. How heavy we are without Martin. Oh, don't look so dreadfully solemn, you two. It might be a bit brighter, just for a minute. I'm afraid we haven't got your light touch, my dear Frida. I suppose I feel like this because, in spite of everything, I feel like a hostess expecting company, and I can't help thinking about bright remarks and sandwiches. Here they are. You let them in, Robert. Right. Have you really known a long time? Yes. Yes, more than a year. I've often wanted to say something to you about it. What would you have said? Well, I don't quite know. Something idiotic. Friendly. Very friendly. And I only guessed about you tonight, Frida. And now it all seems so obvious. I can't think why I never guessed before. Neither can I. <laughs> this is quite mad, isn't it? Quite mad. And rapidly getting madder. I don't care, do you? It's rather a relief. Yes, it is, in a way. But it's rather frightening, too. Like being in a car when the brakes are gone. And there are crossroads and corners ahead. Uh, Shh. I can't see why. Well, I'm sorry about this, Frida, but it's Robert's doing. He insisted on our coming back. Well, I think Robert was right. That's a change, anyway. Well, what's all this about? Chiefly about that money, Gordon. Well, hell, I thought as much. Why can't you leave poor Martin alone? Wait a minute, Gordon. Martin didn't take that check. What? Is this true, Robert? Are you sure? Yes, we are sure. You know, I never could understand that wasn't like Martin. Do you really believe that Martin didn't get that money? And if he didn't, who did? And if he didn't, why did he shoot himself? Stanton, we don't know. But we're hoping that you'll tell us. Being funny, Robert? Not a bit. I wouldn't have dragged you back here to be funny. You told me, didn't you, that you were practically certain that Martin took that check? Certainly I did. And I told you why I thought so. All the evidence pointed that way. What happened afterwards proved that I was right. And if it did, then why did you tell Martin that you thought Robert had done it? Don't be ridiculous, Frida. Why should I tell Martin that I thought Robert had done it? Yes, why should you? That's what we want to know. Well, of course I didn't. Yes, you did. All right. Are you in this too? Yes, I'm in it too. Because you lied like that to Martin, telling him you were sure that Robert took the check, you've given me hours and hours and hours of misery. I never meant to, Alwyn. It was a mean, vile lie. After this, I feel that I never want to speak to you again. I'm sorry, Alwyn. I'd rather anything have happened than that. You better stop lying now, Stanton. You've done enough. Why did you play off Martin and me against each other like that? Well, there can only be one explanation, because he took the check himself. My God. You didn't, did you, Stanton? Yes, I did. Then you're a rotten swine, Stanton. Oh, I don't care about the money. But you let Martin take the blame. You let everybody think he was a thief. Don't Shut be up, such Gordon. a hysterical young fool. Keep quiet and stop waving your hands at me. You don't want this to develop into a free fight. But you let Martin... I did not let Martin take the blame, as you call it. 
happened that in the middle of all the fuss about this money, he went and shot himself. You all jumped to the conclusion that it was because he'd taken the money and was afraid of being found out. I let you go on thinking it, that's all. But you deliberately tried to fasten the blame onto Martin or me. Of course he did. It makes it so foul. Not really. I had not the least intention of letting anybody else be punished for what I'd done. I knew I could square it up in a week, and I knew, too, that if necessary, I could make it all right with old Slater, who's a sportsman. But when it all came out, I'd got to pay for time, and that seemed to me the easiest way of doing it. You couldn't have cashed the check at the bank yourself. No, I got somebody else to do that, huh? a fellow who could keep his mouth shut. It was pure coincidence that he was a fellow about the same age and build as you and Martin. Don't go thinking there was any deep-laid plot there wasn't. There never is in real life. It was all improvised and haphazard and damn stupid. Why didn't you confess to this before? Why the devil should I? Martin's suicide put paid to the whole thing. Nobody wanted to talk about it after that. Dear Martin must have done it, so we won't mention it. That was the line. It wasn't the 500. I'd have been glad to replace that. But I knew damned well that if I confessed, the old man would have had me out of the firm in two minutes. I wasn't one of his pets like you and Martin. If the old man had thought for a minute that I'd done it, there'd have been none of this hush-hush business. He'd have felt like calling the police. Don't forget I'd been a junior clerk in the office. You fellows hadn't. Oh, it makes a difference, I can tell you. But my father's been retired from the firm for six months. Well, what if he has? The whole thing was over and done with. Why open it up again? It might never have been mentioned if you hadn't started on this damn fool inquisition tonight. Robert Gordon and I were all working well together in the firm. What would have happened if I'd confessed? Where are we? Who's better off because of this? Well, you're not, it's true, but Martin is. And the people who cared about Martin. Are they? Well, of course they are. Don't be too sure. At least we know now that he wasn't a mean thief. And that's all you do know. But for all that, he went and shot himself. Martin shot himself. And he did it knowing that he'd never touched the money. So it must have been something else. Well, what was it? You see what you've started now? Well, what have we started? I'm talking now as if you knew a lot more about Martin than we did. What I do know is that he must have had some reason for doing what he did. And that if it wasn't the money, it must have been something else. Perhaps he did it because he thought I'd taken the money. Oh, and then again, perhaps not. If you think Martin would have shot himself because he thought you'd taken some money, then you didn't know your own brother. Why, he laughed when I told him. It amused him. A lot of things amused that young man. That's true, I know. He didn't care. He didn't care at all. Look here. Do you know why Martin did shoot himself? No. How should I? You talk as if you do. I can imagine reasons. And what do you mean by that? I mean he was that sort of chap. He'd got his life into a mess. Well, I don't think... I that... don't blame him. <laughs> Oh, you don't blame him. And who are you to blame him or not to blame him? You're not fit to mention his name. You hung your mean little piece of thieving around his neck, tried to poison our memory of him, and now, when you're found out and Martin's name is cleared of it, you want to begin all over again and start hinting that he was a criminal or a lunatic or something. That's true. The less you say now, the better. The less we all say, the better. You should have thought of that before. I told you as much before you began dragging all this stuff out. Like a fool, you wouldn't leave well alone. Anyway, I've cleared Martin's name. You've cleared nothing yet. And if you'd a glimmer of sense, you'd see it. But now I don't give a damn. You're going to get all you ask for. One of the things we shall ask for is to be rid of you. Do you really think you'll be able to stay on at the firm after this? I don't know and I don't care. Well, you did a year ago. Yes, but now I don't. I can get along better now without the firm than they can without me. Well, after this, at least it will be a pleasure to try. You always hated Martin, and I knew it. I had my reasons. Unlike the White House family, father, daughter, and son, who all fell in love with him. Does that mean anything, Stanton? If it doesn't, just take it back now. If it does, you'll kindly explain yourself. I'll take nothing back. Stanton, please. 
Don't let's have any more of this. We've all said too much already. I'm sorry, Alvin, but you can't blame me. I'm waiting for your explanation. And don't you see? It's me he's getting at. Is that true, Stanton? Well, I'm certainly not leaving her out. Be careful. It's too late to be careful. Why do you think Frida's been so angry with me? There's only one reason that I've known it for a long time. She was in love with Martin. Frida, <laughs> is it true? Yes. Has that been the trouble all along? Yes, all along. When did it begin? Mm, a long time ago. Oh, it seems a long time ago. Ages. Before we were married? Yes. I thought I could break it then. I did for a little time. But it came back worse than ever. I wish you'd told me. Why didn't you tell me? I wanted to. Uh, oh, hundreds of times I seem to have tried to. I, I said the opening words to myself, you know. Sometimes I've hardly known whether I didn't actually say them out loud to you. Oh, I wish you had. I wish you had. Oh, why didn't I say it for myself? It seems plain enough now. Oh, I must have been a fool. I know now when it began. It was when we were all down at Tintagel that summer. Yes, that's where it began. Tintagel. That lovely, lovely summer. <laughs> Nothing's ever been quite real since. Martin went away walking, and you said you'd stay a few days with the Hutchinsons. Yes. Who's that? Martin and I spent that little time together, of course. <laughs> it was the only time we really did spend together. It didn't mean much to him. A sort of experiment, that's all. But didn't Martin care? No, not really. Oh, if he had have done it, it would have been all so simple. That's why I never told you. And I thought that when we were married, it would be different. It wasn't fair to you, I know. But I thought it would be all right. But so did Martin. It wasn't. You know that, too. But why didn't Martin himself tell me he knew how unhappy I was? He couldn't. He was rather afraid of you. Martin? Afraid of me? Yes, he was. Nonsense. He wasn't afraid of anybody. Certainly not of me. Oh, yes, he was in a queer way. That's true, Robert. He was. I knew that. So did I. He told me that when you're really angry, you'll stop at nothing. Queer, I never knew Martin felt like that. It was he. I wonder why. What was it? Frida, it, it, it couldn't have no, been this. No, no, he didn't care. Oh, Martin. Frida. Frida, don't. That's how it goes on, you see, Kaplan. A good evening's work, this. I'm not regretting it. I'm glad all this has come out. I wish to God I'd known earlier, that's all. What difference would it have made? You couldn't have done anything? To begin with, I'd have known the truth. And then something might have been done about it. I wouldn't have stood in their way. Oh, you didn't stand in their way. No, it was Martin himself, you see. He didn't care, as Frida says. I knew. He told me about it. Martin told you? Yes. Frida's brother? Well, why should I lie about it? Martin told me. He used to tell me everything. Oh, rubbish. He thought you were a little nuisance. Always hanging about That's him. not true. It is, he told me so. That that very last Saturday when I took him the cigarette box. Frida, you're making this up, every word of it. I know you are. Martin would never have said that about me. You're just saying this because you're jealous. I'm not. You've always been jealous of Martin's interest in me. God, that, that's simply disgusting. No, it isn't. It is. He told me himself how tired he was of your hanging about him and suddenly becoming hysterical. Oh, I see what he meant now. Every time he's been mentioned tonight, you've been hysterical. What are you trying to persuade me into believing you are? Frida, you're mad. It's all jealousy. Jealousy. If he thought I was a nuisance, Martin wouldn't have kept asking me down to the cottage. But he was tired of you pestering him and worrying him all the time. He didn't care for women. He was sick of them. He told me so. He wanted me to tell you... 
so that you'd leave him alone. Oh, you make me feel sick. Will you just leave me Stop alone? Stop it. Stop it, both of you. Oh, uh, let them have it out. They might as well, now they've started. And I was going to tell you too, Frida. Only then he killed himself. I don't believe it. I don't believe it, Gordon. I... Martin couldn't have been so cruel. Couldn't he? <laughs> well, what did he say to you that afternoon when you took in the cigarette box? Oh, what does it matter what he said? You're, you're just making up these abominable lies. Look here, I'm not having any more of this. You're like a pair of lunatics, screaming at each other like that over a dead man. I understand about you, Frida, and I'm sorry. But for God's sake, keep quiet about it now. I can't stand any more. As for you, Gordon, you, you must be tight or something. I'm not. I'm as sober as you are. Well, behave as if you were. You're not a child. I know Martin was a friend of yours. Friend of mine? He wasn't a friend of mine. He talked like a fish. Martin was the only person on earth I really cared about. I couldn't help it. There it was. I'd have done anything for him. Five hundred pounds. My God, I'd have stolen five thousand pounds from the firm if Martin had asked me to. He was the most marvellous person I'd ever known. Sometimes I tried to hate him. Sometimes he gave me a hell of a time. But it didn't really matter. He was Martin. And I'd rather be with him, even if he was just jeering at me, than with anybody else I've ever known. He didn't really care about women at all. He tried to amuse himself with them. He really distrusted them, disliked them. He told me so many a time. Martin told me everything. And that was the finest thing that ever happened to me. And now you can call me any, any name you like. I don't care. What about Betty? You can leave her out of it. I want to. I can't help thinking about her. Well, you needn't. She can look after herself. That's just what she can't do and she oughtn't to have to do. You ought to see that. Well, I don't see it. And I know Betty better than you do. Oh, you know everybody better than anybody else does, don't you? You would say that, wouldn't you? I can't help it if Martin liked me better than he liked you. How do you know that he liked... Oh, stop that. Stop it. Both of you. Can't you see that Martin was making mischief just to amuse himself? No, I can't. He wasn't like that. Oh, no. Not at all like that. You couldn't ask for a quieter, simpler, more sincere fellow. Nobody's going to pretend that he was that. But at least he didn't steal money and then try to put the blame on other people. We could all start talking like that, you know, Frida, just throwing things at each other's heads, but I suggest we don't. I agree. But I do want Frida and Gordon to understand that it's simply madness quarrelling over anything Martin ever said to them. He was a born mischief maker and as cruel as a cat. That's one of the reasons why I disliked him so much. Disliked? Yes, I'm sorry, Robert, but I didn't like Martin. I detested him. You ought to have seen that. I saw it. And you were quite right. I'm afraid you always are, Owen. No, I'm not. I trust your judgment. So would I, for that matter. No, no. And you're the only one of us who will come out of this as sound as you went in. No, that's not true. No. It was Alwyn and that damned cigarette box that began the whole business. Oh, it was nothing. I knew all about that all along. You knew about that? I knew you'd been to see Martin Kaplan that Saturday night. You knew? Yes. But how could you? I don't understand. I was spending that weekend at my own cottage. You remember that garage where the road forks? You stopped there that night for some petrol. Yes, I believe I did. They told me. And said you'd taken the fellow's end road, and so I knew you must have been going to see Martin. You couldn't have been going anywhere else, could you? Quite simple known all this time? Yes. All this time. I suppose, Stanton, it's no use asking you why you've never said a word about it. I'm afraid not. I think I've done my share in the confession box tonight. Well, I wish I'd known a bit more about it, that's all. There was I dragged into this foul inquest. Did I know this? Did I know that? My God. And all the time I wasn't the last person he talked to at all. Frida had been there sometime in the afternoon, and Alwyn was there that very night, at the very moment, for all we oh, know. don't talk rubbish. Well, is it rubbish? After all, what do we know? What was Alwyn doing there? She's told us that. She was there to talk to Martin about the money. And how far does that take us? What do you mean by that? He means, I imagine, that Alwyn hasn't told us very much so far. We know she went to Martin to talk to him about the missing money. We know that Martin thought Robert had taken it. And that she thought so, too. And that is all we do know. 
Yes. We don't know how long she was there, or what Martin said to her, or anything. It's a good job she wasn't pushed in front of that coroner, or he'd have had it out of her in no time. I think it's up to her to tell us just a little bit more. Well, there's no need to sound so damned vindictive about it. Oh, hello. What's the matter, Alwyn? There's someone outside the window. There's nobody there now. No, they darted away, but I swear there was somebody. They've been listening. Well, they couldn't have chosen a better night for it. It's impossible, Alwyn. And there isn't a sign of anybody. Thank the Lord for that. Oh, earth can this be? Oh, don't ask me. I have the least idea. Go and see. Yes, I know, but we don't want anybody interrupting well, us now. Well, don't let them interrupt us, whoever they are. I have to see who it is. I thought you'd gone to bed, Betty. What's the matter? You're, you're talking about me, all of you. I know you are. I wanted to go to bed. I started to go. And then I couldn't. I knew you were all talking about me. I couldn't stand it. I had to come back. Well, you were wrong. As a matter of fact, you're the one person we haven't been talking about. Is that true, Robert? Yes, of course. You were outside just now, weren't you, Betty? Outside the window, listening. No, I wasn't listening. I was trying to peep in. To see exactly who was here and what you all looked like. You see, I was sure you were all saying things about me. And I meant to go to bed and I was tired. But I felt too excited inside to sleep. And so I took three of those tablets I have to make me sleep. And now I feel absolutely dopey. God knows what I shall be saying in a minute. You mustn't mind me. I'm so sorry, Betty. Uh, can I get you anything? No. Sure? And not a word's been said about you. In fact, we all wanted to keep you out of this. It's all rather unpleasant. Mm, but seeing Betty's married into one of the family's concerned, I think she ought not to be too carefully protected from the sordid truth. Oh, shut up, Frida. I won't, and why should I? Oh, and I thought we should see a different Robert now. After what you've said tonight, Frida, I can't see that it matters much to you how different I may be. Perhaps not, but I still like reasonably decent manners. Then set us an example. Oh, shut up, both of you. But, but what have you been talking about, then? Began about the money. Y you mean that Martin took? Martin didn't take it. We know that now. Stanton took that money. He's admitted it. Admitted it? St but surely that's impossible. Oh, it sounds impossible, doesn't it, Betty? But it didn't. Oh, I'm sorry to go down with such a bump in your estimation, my dear Betty, but uh, this is our night for telling the truth, and I've had to admit that I took that money. Terrible, isn't it? But if Martin didn't take the money, then why... Why did he shoot himself? That's what we all want to know. Alwyn saw him last of all that very evening, and she knew he hadn't taken the money. And that's all she's told us. I've told you that he thought Robert had taken the money. And that was enough in the state he was in then throw him clean off his balance. You've told me yourselves that he... he was secretly rather frightened of me. It was because Martin had a respect for me. He thought I was the solid, steady one. I was one of the very few people he had a respect for. I tell you, it must have been a hell of a shock to poor Martin. I don't think it was, Robert. Uh, neither do I. But neither of you knew him as I did. Oh, what's the good of talking? He was in a wretched state, all run down and neurotic, and when he heard that I'd taken the cheque, he must have felt that there was nobody left he could depend on. That I'd let him down. He'd probably been brooding over it day and night. He was that sort. He wouldn't let you see it, Alwyn. But it would be there all the time, giving him hell. Oh, what a fool I was. You? Yes, of course, I ought to have gone straight to Martin and told him what Stanton had told me. If this is true, then the person really responsible is Stanton. Yes. Rubbish. It isn't. Don't you see what you did? No, because I don't believe it. No, because you don't choose to, that's all. Oh, talk sense. Can't you see Martin had his own reason? No, what drove Martin to suicide was my stupidity and your damned lying, Stanton. <gasps> Sorry, Betty, but this has got to be settled once and for all. You're none of you in a state to settle anything. Listen to me, Oh, Stanton. drop it, man. Now you've got to answer. I'll never forgive you for telling Martin what you did. By God, I won't. You've got it all wrong. They haven't, you rotten liar. Oh, get out. You made Martin shoot himself. Wait a minute, Gordon. Martin didn't shoot himself. Ma Martin did Of course he didn't. 
I shot him. Oh, that's ridiculous, Alwyn. You couldn't have done. Is this your idea of a joke? I wish it was. Alwyn. She must be hysterical or something. I, I believe people often confess to all sorts of mad things in that state, things they couldn't possibly have done. Alwyn's not hysterical. She means it. But she can't mean... She murdered him, can she? You might as well tell us exactly what happened now, Alwyn, if you can stand it. And I might as well tell you before you begin that I'm not at all surprised. I suspected it was you at the first. You suspected I'd done it? Stanton, why? For three reasons. The first was that I couldn't understand why Martin should shoot himself. You see, I knew he hadn't taken the money, and though he was in every kind of mess, he didn't seem to me the sort of chap who'd get out of it that way. Then I knew you'd been with him quite late, because, as I said before... I'd been told you'd gone that way. And the third reason? Oh, well, that'll keep. You'd better tell us what happened, now. Uh, it was an accident, wasn't it? Yes. It was really an accident. I'll tell you what happened, but I can't go into details. It's all too muddled and horrible. But I'll tell you the complete truth. I won't hide anything more, I promise you. I think we'd... All better tell everything we know now. Really speak our minds. I agree. Wait a minute, Owen. Will you have a drink before you begin? I just have a little soda water, if you don't mind. Sit here. Thank you. I went to see Martin that Saturday night, as you know, to talk to him about the missing money. Mr. Whitehouse had told me about it. He thought that either Martin or Robert must have taken it. I gathered it was more likely Robert, so I went to see Martin. I didn't like Martin, and he knew it. But he knew, too, what I felt about Robert, and after all, he was Robert's brother. He believed that Robert had taken the money, and he wasn't a bit worried about it. I'm sorry, Robert, but he wasn't. I hated him for that, too. He was rather maliciously amused. The good brother fallen at last, that sort of thing. I can believe that. I hate to, but I know he could be like that sometimes. He was that day. You found that too, that day? Yes, he was in one of his worst moods. He could be cruel, torturing sometimes. I've never seen him as bad as he was that night. He wasn't really sane. Alwyn. I'm sorry, Robert. I'd, I didn't want you to know all this, but there's no help for it now. You see... Martin had been taking some sort of drug. Drug? You mean dope stuff? Yes, he'd had a lot of it. Are you sure? I can't believe it. It's true, Kaplan. I knew it. So did I. He made me try some once. I didn't like it. it. Just made me feel rather sick. When was this? You remember when he went to Berlin and how nervy he was just then? Yes, I remember. Well, the fellow he met there put him onto it. Uh, some new drug that a lot of the... Literary and theatrical set were doping themselves with. But did Martin? Really? Yes. He liked it. Took more and more of it. But where did he get it? Well, through some German he knew in town. When he couldn't get it, he was pretty rotten. Not as bad as those dope fiends one reads about, you know, but nevertheless pretty rotten. But didn't you try to stop him? Of course. He only laughed. I don't blame him, really. None of you can understand what life was like to Martin. He was so sensitive and nervy. He was one of those people who are meant to be happy. We are all those people who are meant to be happy. Martin's no exception. Yes, that's true, but I know what Gordon means. You couldn't help knowing what he means if you knew Martin. There's no sort of middle state, no easy jog trot for him. Either he had to be gay, and when he was gay, he was gayer than anybody else. Or he was intensely miserable. I'm like that. Well, everybody is, aren't they? Except old and stuffy people. But what about this drug, Alwyn? Well, he took some... It was in little white tablets while I was there. And it had a horrible effect on him. It gave him a sort of devilish gaiety. I can see him now. His eyes were queer. Oh, he wasn't really sane. What happened? It's horrible to talk about. I've tried not to think about it. He knew I disliked him, but he couldn't believe I really disliked him. 
He was frightfully conceited about himself. He seemed to think that everybody young, male or female, ought to be falling in love with him. He saw himself as a sort of pan, you know. Yes, he did. And he'd every reason to. He began taunting me. He thought of me, or pretended to, as a priggish spinster full of repressions who'd never really lived. Oh, rubbish, because I'm really not that type at all. But he pretended to think I was and kept telling me that my dislike of him showed that I was trying to repress a great fascination he had for me. I'd never lived, never would live, and all the rest of it. He talked a lot about that. And I ought to have run out and left him, but I felt I couldn't while he was in that state. In a way, I was sorry for him because, really, he was ill, sick in mind and body, and I thought perhaps I could calm him down. I might dislike him, but after all, he wasn't a stranger. He was one of our set, mixed up with most of the people I liked best in the world. I tried hard to stop him, but everything I said to him seemed to make him worse. I suppose it would when he was in that excited, abnormal state. Well, he talked about my repressions, and when I pretended to laugh at him, he got more and more excited. And then he tried to show me some beastly, foul drawings he had. Horrible, obscene things by some mad Belgian oh, artist. Oh, Frida, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I know how this must be hurt. Oh, what? Don't listen to any more. I'll stop if you like. Oh, go and lie down. Oh, I, I couldn't. I... He wasn't like that, really. Well, if you'd known him as I'd known him before. I know that. We all do. He was different. He was ill. Go on, Alwyn. Yes, Alwyn. You can't stop now. Well, there isn't a lot to tell now. When I pushed his beastly drawings away and was rather indignant about them, he got still more excited, completely unbalanced, and shouted out things about my repressions. And then I found he was telling me to take my clothes off. I told him not to be a fool and that I was going. But then he stood between me and the door. And he had a revolver in his hand and was shouting something about danger and terror and love. He wasn't threatening me with it or himself. He was just waving it about, being dramatic. I didn't even believe it was loaded. But by this time, I'd had more than enough of him. I couldn't be sorry for him anymore, and I told him to get out of the way. And when he wouldn't, I tried to push him out of the way. And then we had a struggle. He tried to tear my clothes, and we really fought one another. It was horrible. He wasn't any stronger than I was. I'd grabbed the hand with the revolver in it. I'd turned the revolver towards him. His finger must have been on the trigger. I must have given it a jerk. The revolver went off. Oh, horrible, horrible. I tried and tried to forget that. If he'd just been wounded, I'm sure I would have stopped with him, even though I was in such panic. But he wasn't. He was dead. God. You can't be blamed, Alwyn. Of course she can't be blamed. And there must never be a word spoken about this. Not to anybody. We must all promise that. Give me a cigarette, Robert. It's a pity we can't all be as cool and businesslike about this as you are, Stanton. I don't feel very cool and businesslike about it. But you see, it's not as big a surprise to me as it is to you people. I guessed long ago that something like this had happened. But it looked so much like suicide that nobody bothered to suggest it wasn't. It never seemed to me to be anything else. All the evidence pointed that way. I can't think how you could have guessed, even though you knew Alwyn had been there. And I told you I had a third reason. I was over fairly early next morning. The postmistress at Fallow's End rang me up. And I was there before anybody but the village constable and the doctor. And I spotted something on the floor that the village bobby had missed. 
I picked it up when he wasn't looking. I've kept it in my pocketbook ever since. I'm rather observant about such things. Let me see. Yes. That's a piece of the dress I was wearing. It was torn in the struggle we had. I'll chuck it on the fire. So that's how you knew. That's how I knew. But why didn't you say anything? I can tell you that. He didn't say anything because he wanted everybody to think that Martin had shot himself. You see, that meant that Martin must have taken the money. That's about it, I suppose. It falls into line with everything we've heard from him tonight. No. No, there happened to be another reason, much more important. I knew that if Alwyn had had a hand in Martin's death, then something like that must have happened. And so Alwyn couldn't be blamed. I knew her better than any of you. Felt I did. And I trusted her. She's about the only person I would trust. She knows all about that. I've told her often enough. She's not interested, but there it is. You never even hinted to me that you knew. <laughs> Surprising, isn't it? What a chance I missed to capture your interest for a few minutes. But I couldn't take that line with you. I suppose even nowadays, when everybody's so damn tough, there, there's got to be one person that you behave to always as if you were Sir Roger de Coverley. And with me, you've been that person for a long time now. And I knew all along that you were saying nothing because you thought Robert here had taken the money and that he was safe after everybody put it down to Martin. And that didn't always make it any easier for me. No? What a shame. But what a fine, romantic character you are, aren't you? Steady, Betty, you don't understand. How could she? Why do you say that in that tone of voice? Oh, why does one say anything in any tone of voice? You know, Stanton, I nearly did take you into my confidence. And that might have made a difference. But I chose a bad moment. Why? When was this? Tell me. I told you I sat in my car that night for some time, not able to do anything. Then, when I felt a little better, I felt I had to tell somebody. And you were the nearest person. But you didn't go there that night? Yes, I did. I drove over to your cottage at Church Marley that very Saturday night. I got there about 11 o'clock or just afterwards. I left my car at the bottom of that tiny narrow lane and walked up to your cottage. And then I walked back again. Oh. You... Walked up to the cottage? Yes, yes. Don't be stupid about it, please, Stanton. I walked right up to your cottage and saw enough to set me walking straight back again. So that's when you came. <laughs> and after that, it was hopeless, I suppose. Quite hopeless. I think that added the last touch to that night. I don't think I've ever felt the same about people. Not just here, but everybody, even the people who walk into the office or sit opposite one in buses and trains since that night. I know that's stupid, but I couldn't help it. And you must all have noticed that I've been completely off country cottages. Yes. Even Betty has noticed that. <laughs> Why, what's the matter, Betty? <laughs> what a little liar you are, Betty. <laughs> We all been liars. But you haven't, Betty. Oh, don't be such a <laughs> fool, Robert. Of course she has. She's lied like fury. What about? Why don't you ask? Oh, what does it matter? Leave the child alone. I'm not a child. That's the mistake you've all made. Not. Not you and Stanton. Is that what they mean? Why don't you tell them it's ridiculous? Oh, can she? Don't be absurd. You see, Robert, I saw them both in Stanton's cottage that night. I'm sorry, Alwyn, but I won't take even your word for this. Besides, there are other possible explanations. Oh, drop this, Captain. We've had too much already. I'm going. You're not going. Don't be a fool. It's no business of yours. Oh, that's where you're wrong, Stanton. This is where Robert's business rarely begins. I'm waiting for an answer, Betty. What do you want me to say? Were you with Stanton at his cottage? Yes. Were you his mistress? Yes. Oh, my God, I could why? Why, in God's name, why? Oh, 
could you? Could you? How could I? Because I'm not a child and I'm not a little stuffed doll, that's why. You would drag all this out and now you can damn well have it. Yes, I stayed with Stanton that night and I've stayed with him other nights. And he's not in love with me and I know it and I'm not in love with him. I wouldn't marry him if I could. But I've got to make something happen. Gordon was driving me mad. If you want to call someone a child, then call him one for that's all he is. This damn marriage of ours that you all got so sentimental about. It's the biggest sham there's ever been. It isn't a marriage at all. It's just nothing. Pretense, pretense, pretense. Betty, darling. Gordon, darling. And all the time he's mooning over his Martin. I was in love with him when we were married and I thought everything was going to be marvellous. I wouldn't have looked at anybody else if he'd been real. But he just isn't there. He can't even talk to me. For God's sake, shut up, I Betty. won't shut up. They want to know the truth and they can have it. I don't care. I've had nothing, nothing out of my marriage but shame and misery. Betty, that's simply nonsense. If I were the nice little doll you all thought me, perhaps it wouldn't have mattered, but I'm not. And I'm not a child either. I'm a woman. And Stanton was the one person who guessed what was happening and treated me like a woman. I wouldn't have blamed you if you'd gone and fallen in love properly with somebody. This was just a, a low, sordid intrigue, a dirty little affair. Not worth all your silly lies. <sighs> I suppose Stanton was the rich uncle in America who kept giving you all those fine presents. Yes, he was. You couldn't even be generous, though you'd have given your precious Martin everything we'd got. I knew Stanton didn't really care for me, so I got what I could out of him. Betty. Oh, it served you right. Men who say they're in love with one woman and keep spending their weekends with another deserve all they get. Is that why you suddenly found yourself so short of money that you had to have that 500 pounds? Yes. Queer how it works out, isn't it? Then Betty's responsible for everything. For all this misery. For Martin. You see, always Martin. If I was responsible for all that, then it's your fault, really, Gordon. Because you're responsible for everything that happened to me. You ought never to have married me. I didn't know. It was a mistake. We seem to make that kind of mistake in our family. I'm going to have a drink. I ought to have left you long before this. That was my mistake. Staying on. Trying to make the best of it. Pretending to be married to somebody who wasn't there, simply dead. Yes. I think I am dead. I think I died last summer. Baldwin shot me. Oh, Gordon, I think that's unfair and also rather stupid and effective. It may have sounded like that, but it wasn't. I meant it, Alwyn. I began this, didn't I? Well, I'll finish it. I'll say something now. Betty, I worshipped you. I suppose you knew that. If she didn't. She must have been very dense. I'm talking to Betty now. You might leave us alone for a minute. Did you realise that I felt like that, Betty? Yes. But I didn't care very much. No, why should you? No, it isn't that. But I knew you weren't in love with me. You don't know me. You were only worshipping somebody you'd invented who looked like me. That's not the same thing at all. I didn't do much about it. I couldn't, you see. I thought you and Gordon were reasonably happy together. Yes, we put up a good show, didn't we? You did. Yes, we did. And what would have happened if we'd gone on pretending like hell to be happy together? Nothing. No? If we'd gone on pretending long enough, I believe we might have been happy together, sometimes. It often works out like that. Never. Yes, it does. That's why all this is so wrong, really. The real truth is something so deep you can't get at it this way. And all this half-truth does is to blow everything up. It isn't civilised. I agree. Oh, you agree. You might as well. Oh, you'll get no sympathy from me, Captain. Sympathy from you? I never want to set eyes on you again, Stanton. You're a thief, a cheat, a liar, and a dirty chief seducer. And you're a fool, Kaplan. You look solid, but you're not. Oh, you've a good deal in common with that cracked brother of yours. You won't face up to real things. You've been living in a fool's paradise. And now, having got yourself out of it by tonight's efforts, all you're doing... You're busy building yourself a fool's hell to live in. I think this was your glass, Stanton. 
now take yourself after it. Get out. Good night, Alvin. I'm sorry about all this. So am I. Good night. Good night, Frida. Good night, Charles. I suppose you're coming along, Gordon? Not with you, I'm afraid. And don't forget, Stanton, you owe the firm 500 pounds and a resignation. Oh, you're going to take it that way, are you? Yes, I'm going to take it that way. You'll regret it. Good night. No, don't trouble. I can find my way out. Don't be too hasty, Gordon. Whatever his faults, Stanton's a first-class man at his job. If he goes, the firm will suffer. I can't help it. I couldn't work with him after this. The firm will just have to suffer, that's all. Don't worry, it's not a case of the firm suffering. The firm's smashed to hell now. Nonsense. Is it? I don't think so. Well, Betty, darling, I think we'd better return to our happy little home. Our dear little nest. Oh, don't, Gordon. <laughs> I'll let you out. Goodbye. Good... Why do you look like that? I'm not saying goodbye to you. I don't know you. I never did, it seems. I'm saying goodbye to your body, that's all. Oh. Robert, I can't bear seeing you like this. You don't know how it hurts me. I'm sorry, Alvin. I really am sorry. You're the only one who's really come out of this. I know that. <laughs> Strange, isn't it? that you should have been feeling like that about me all the time. Yes, all the time. I'm sorry. I'm not. I mean about myself. I suppose I ought to be, but I'm not. It's hurt like anything sometimes, but it's kept me going too. I know. And you see, now I've stopped going. Something's broken inside. It won't seem bad tomorrow. It never does. All this isn't going to seem any better tomorrow, Alvin. Frida will help, too. After all, Robert, she's fond of you. No, not really. It isn't that she dislikes me steadily. But every now and then she hates me. And now I see why, of course. She hates me because I'm Robert Kaplan and not Martin. Oh. Because he's dead and I'm alive. She may feel differently after tonight. Oh, she may. I doubt it. She doesn't change easily. That's the trouble. And then again, you see, I don't care anymore. That's the point. Whether she changes or doesn't change, I don't care now. And you know, there's nothing I wouldn't do, Robert. I... I run away this very minute with you, if you like. I'm terribly grateful, Alvin. And nothing happens here, inside. That's the damned awful, cruel thing. Nothing happens. All hollow, empty. <sighs> I'm sure it's not at all the proper thing to say at such a moment, but the fact remains I feel rather hungry. What about you all, when you, Robert? Uh, have you been drinking too much? Yes, I've been drinking too much. Well, it's very silly of you. Yes. And you did ask for all this. I asked for it. And I got it. I doubt if you minded very much until it came to Betty. Oh, that's not true. But I can understand your thinking so. You see, as more and more of this rotten stuff came out, so more and more I came to depend on my secret thoughts of Betty. I've known for some time, of course, that you were getting very sentimental and noble about her. And I've known some time, too, all about Betty. I often thought of telling you. I'm not sorry you didn't. You ought to be. Why? Well, that kind of self-deception's rather stupid. What about you and Martin? I didn't deceive myself. Well, I knew everything. Oh, nearly everything about him. I wasn't in love with somebody who really wasn't there, somebody I'd made up. I think you were. Probably we always are. And it's not so bad, then. You can always build up another image for yourself to fall in love with. No, you can't. That's the trouble. You, you lose the capacity for building. You run short of the stuff that creates beautiful illusions, just as if a gland had stopped working. Then you to learn to live without illusion. It can't be done, not for us. We started life too early for that. Or possibly they're breeding people now who can live without illusions. I hope so. But I can't do it. I've lived among illusions. You have. Well, what if I have? They've given me hope and courage. They've helped me to live. I suppose we ought to get all that from faith in life. But I haven't got any, no religion or anything. 
Just this damned farmyard to live in, that's all. And just a few bloody glands and secretions and nerves to do it with. But it didn't look too bad. I would my little illusions, you see. Why didn't you leave him alone instead of clamouring for the truth all night like a fool? Because I am a fool. Stanton was right. That's the only answer. I had to meddle like a child with a file. I began this evening with something to keep me going. I had good memories of Martin. I had a wife who didn't love me, but at least seemed too good for me. I had two partners I liked and respected. There was a girl I could idealise. Oh, no, now... Robert, please, we know. No, but you don't know. You can't know. Not as I know. You wouldn't stand there like that as if we'd only just had some damn silly little squabble about a hand at oh, bridge. Frida, can't, can't you see? We're not living in the same world now. Oh. Everything's gone. My brother was an obscene lunatic. Oh, stop that. And my wife... Doted on him and pestered him. One of my partners is a liar and a cheat and a thief. Oh, and the other, God knows what he is, some sort of hysterical young pervert. And the girl's a greedy little cat on the tiles. Oh, Robert, no, this is horrible, mad. Please, please don't go on. It won't seem like this tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow? I tell you, I'm through, I'm through. There can't be a tomorrow. <gasps> He's got a revolver in his bedroom. Stop, Robert, stop. Stop! <laughs> It shan't happen. <laughs> da, 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 da. How many scenes did we miss? Five, I think. I suppose I must have been telling a lot of lies in those scenes. That's why that man was so angry, the husband, I mean. Oh, listen to the men. <laughs> They're probably laughing at something very improper. No, mm. just gossip. <laughs> men gossip like anything. Of course they do. They've got a marvellous excuse now that they're all three directors of the firm. <laughs> what a snug little group you are. Snug little group. <laughs> Sounds disgusting. Chanting. I hate to leave it. I should think you do. It must be so comforting to be all so settled. Mm, pretty good. But I suppose, Frida, you all miss your brother-in-law. He used to be down here with you too, didn't he? You mean Robert's brother, Martin? <laughs> I say, have I dropped a brick? I'm always dropping bricks. <laughs> no, not at all. It was very distressing at the time, but it's all right now. Martin shot himself. Oh, yes, yes. Dreadful business, of course. He was very handsome, wasn't he? Yes, very handsome. Uh, who was very handsome? May we know? Not uh, you, Charles. They were talking about me. Betty, why do you allow them to talk about your husband in this fulsome fashion? <laughs> You've no shame, girl. Gordon, darling, I'm sure you've had too much manly gossip and old brandy. Sorry to be so late, Frida, but it's that wretched puppy of yours. <laughs> What's he been doing now? He was trying to eat the script of Sonia Williams' new novel. I was afraid it might make him sick. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Miss Mockridge, how we talk of you novelists? Yes, I hear you. I've just been saying what a charming, cosy little group you've made here. I think you've been lucky. Oh, it's not all luck, Miss Markridge. See, we all happen to be nice, easygoing people. Except Betty. She's terribly wild. Oh, that's only because Gordon doesn't beat her often enough. Oh. Yet. <laughs> you see, Miss Peel, Mr. Stanton is still a cynical bachelor. I'm afraid he rather spoils the picture. What's disturbing the ether tonight? Anybody know? Gordon, don't start it again. We've only just turned it off. What did you hear? The last half of a play. It's called The Sleeping Dog. Why? We're not sure, but it ends with a gentleman shooting himself. What fun they have at the BBC. <laughs> yes, <laughs> shot some things. I think I understand that play now. The Sleeping Dog was the truth, you see, and that man, the husband, insisted upon disturbing it. He was quite right to disturb it. Well, see, I wonder... I think telling the truth is about as healthy as skidding at 60 around a corner. And life's got a lot of dangerous corners, hasn't it, Charles? It can have, if you don't choose your route well. <laughs> Let's talk about something else. Who wants a drink? A drinks, Robert. Yes. And cigarettes. Oh, this box is empty. Oh, there's one in this one. Uh, Miss Mockridge? No, thank you. I'll win a cigarette. Oh, I remember that box. It plays a tune at you, doesn't it? Well, I remember the tune. Uh, La Traviata. I say, wait a minute, listen to this. Oh, I adore that tune. What is it? Can't we talk it over? What? Can't we talk it over? Oh. 
Miss Markridge, will you dance? No, thank you, Gordon. I will. Come on, Gordon, let's dance. <laughs> That was Dangerous Corner, a play by J.B. Priestley with Flora Robson as Alwyn Peel. Frida Kaplan was played by Gudrun Yeur, Miss Mockridge, the novelist, by Mary Grew, Betty Whitehouse, Elizabeth Proud, Charles Stanton, Gerard Green, Gordon Whitehouse, Noel Davis, and Robert Kaplan by David March.